Stephen, what have you said to the players to try and lift them after midweek? Yeah, not much. Um, I think sometimes in football you don't have to say too much. Uh, I think players know. I think players will be well aware of the how the f supporters are feeling, uh, how the staff are feeling, and how they're feeling themselves. And sometimes you don't have to say too much. It's about what you do on the pitch in terms of your reaction and your performance individually and collectively. Um, the players will know how I'm feeling. They'll know it pretty clear. In some aspects, then, is it an easier team talk or easier to prepare for this game because there is a, a grievance amongst themselves that they want to prove a point? Well, I think if they've got anything about them, um, if they've got character and, and, and personality um, and they've got feelings and, and they understand the club and the supporters and um, I think it should be quite straightforward in terms of what you need to give moving forward. Um, so yeah, I mean it won't be any more straightforward than normal. We we won't change much in terms of our preparation, how we go about messages and strength and weaknesses of our position. But I think sometimes you you end up in situations as a player and as a team where tactics and information has to come second. It, it, it's about you and what you give in terms of your performance and I'm expecting a performance uh, for the supporters on Saturday. It's got to be about the supporters on Saturday because that was a tough one for them to take on, on Tuesday and we understand that. What messages are now then, maybe to the supporters and to the players with nine games to go, eight points of gap at the top, do you still believe you can get at least closer to Celtic and make sure you pull away from further away from Aberdeen? We believe we can get closer and that's got to be the challenge and that's what we'll try and do all the way till the end. Listen, we will never stop fighting and giving what we can to, to improve our situation. Um, but let's not look too far ahead. We've got a tough challenge in Kilmarnock at the weekend who will have watched our second half performance against Hibs, will have watched our performance against Aberdeen and they'll come with a game plan um, to try and take points away from us or do similar things. Um, so we, we need to, uh, first and foremost, find a level that's capable of getting the result on the day against Kilmarnock or trying to get close or trying to finish the season strong becomes irrelevant. We've got to look at what's in front of us. You're now beginning to play teams third, fourth, fifth time in a season. Mm. How difficult is that when you go in again or is it easier in a way you know what to expect? Well, I think uh, from a manager's point of view, um, you don't want to bore the players or risk repeating yourself too much. So um, we'll look at Kilmarnock's performance of late against us. So we'll focus more on the last time they came to Ibrox. We'll look at their last couple of performances in terms of what personnel they've got available. Um, but we won't repeat ourselves and give them information that they already know uh, or, or we're wasting our time. But, but as I said, um, the players have got to really think hard from now before kickoff and think about what the perform what what the what do the supporters want to see. That's what I'd be thinking as a player. What do the what do the supporters want to see from me first and foremost? How have you found the last week or so when you know results haven't gone their way and you, you were spending the other night about you know having to sort of face up to questions about your own performance? I mean, is it has it been difficult? No, that's fine. That's fine. Um, I am well aware of the job I'm in and what what I signed up for. I knew after a couple of results that are not favourable that questions would be asked and uh, a lot of pundits and people in the media would be saying stuff and you know you get a lot of keyboard wizards out there. I, I know all that. I've, I've had it as a player. Uh, it's not going to change now I'm a manager. But after Hibs I was fine. The performance first half was probably the best 45 minutes we've played. Should have had the game done and dusted. Second half we come off the gas or for, for whatever reason and the second half performance weren't good enough. But there was a huge referee decision within that that has affected us not taking maximum points. So after Hibs, I was I was fine because I analysed it properly and um, you know there was a lot of positives to take. It's been tough since Aberdeen. It's been tough because not only have we gone out of a cup competition, which always hurts, um, there wasn't many positives to take from the game, and Aberdeen deserved to uh, to qualify. And. Normally, you, you come away from games with a lot of positives and you look out and you have your players that normally stand up and they're there for you. Um, so I've been a bit low and a bit flat, but I'm fine. I'm, I've picked myself back up. I'm ready for the next challenge. And I will guarantee you that I will improve myself personally and I will do everything I can to improve things. That's all I can do. 
you've obviously it's around this time you start sort of managing you start planning for next season. Is is what's happened over the last few days hardened your views either way in terms of certain yeah. players who may or may not have a, an involvement next year? That never stops at Rangers in terms of planning ahead and um, trying to improve the situation. Um, there had to be a lot of change when I took over in the job. Uh, I knew I weren't going to sort the problem out in one transfer window, not even two. But without a doubt, we've moved forward. We've improved. Uh, players that were here before have raised the game. Um, players that we've brought in, the majority have, have stood up and, and done really well. Some haven't, uh, so we're aware of that. And we'll continue to try and improve the 11, continue to try and improve the 18. And you know what I can do is guarantee the supporters here that every bit of time and effort and energy from myself, from Mark Allen, from the recruitment team, we're doing everything we can to make Rangers a better team uh, and a winning team. And my confidence hasn't changed that I can make that happen. But it's not going to happen overnight. Rome wasn't built in a day. And this job was huge when I walked in and it was huge for a reason because a lot of things needed fixing on and off the pitch and we're doing everything we can to make that happen. You made obviously a lot of changes in the summer. Do you anticipate the summer coming that there will be a similar level of sort of incoming players or do you think it will be a sort of... Maybe not in terms of numbers. Um, I think there needed to be a squad overhaul when, when I came. Um, for whatever reason, people will have their own opinions on that. Um, there will be change here, there will be, there'll be new players, there will be better players um, because the current players need some help and support to keep growing and keep improving and give them a better chance of competing for, for, for what's available. So there will be change, we will get more quality and, and add to it and we will improve, of course we will, but I don't expect the same terms and numbers because I don't think we need a squad overhaul. I think we need some bits of mag magic, a couple of marquee players to add to what we've got to, to maybe go to another level. When you look at the performance on Tuesday and you'd said that you, you didn't feel there was any positives you could take, going into the game on Saturday, does it make you tempted to sort of have a sort of overhaul and make big changes to the, to the starting line up? Um, I've had moments since the game thinking that, um, but I haven't analysed the game properly and in more detail. Uh, I don't think we need wholesale changes, um, but some changes will be forced upon us for for injuries or, or for whatever reason. So there will be changes to the 11 uh, come the weekend, but I don't think there needs to be mass changes. Is the flip side to that that you also want players who maybe didn't perform on Tuesday to go out and improve themselves on Saturday? If they've got anything about them, yeah. Um, the worst thing as a footballer is to uh, to lose a game and feel as if you haven't done yourself or your supporters justice. And I think that goes across the board in terms of our Aberdeen performance. So uh, I think it's interesting for me to see um, what what characters I've got in terms of what I see at the weekend, but I expect a reaction, a, a big reaction. There's got to be, otherwise we'll we'll find it difficult to gain. Stephen, the last time Steve Clark was at Ibrox, he was visibly upset post match um, with regards to the abuse he felt he received. Do you hope that the focus is purely going to be on the the football this week and there, there's nothing like that surrounding the game? Yeah, I hope so. Um, I think it was my turn against yeah, Aberdeen. Um, well, yeah. But I'm fine. I'm fine. You know, words have never hurt me from when I was a young boy up until now. I've had a lot of abuse at a lot of stadiums, but I'm totally fine with that. Um, let's hope we're talking about the football. Um, <clears throat> you know, again, I'll ask our supporters to behave in a proper manner and get behind the team. Um, I'm sure they will. But um, Steve Clark's not the only one who, who who's had that of late, and. Um, you know, I've been part of it, but I'm fine with it. It's no problem. Stephen, can I just ask you about Alan McGregor? As a player you've played against him, as a manager you've coached him, he's hung up his gloves from Scotland duty. <coughs> Firstly, how big a loss will he be for Scotland? And secondly, is Scotland's loss Rangers game to an extent? Um, I'm not sure it's Rangers game because he's our player anyway and he's been magnificent for me. Uh, he's a top player, so um, first and foremost, I respect his decision. Uh, I know the, the person, I know the player, and he knows his body, Alan, and if he feels as if it's going to help him from a personal point of view um, and he's going to feel better for Rangers, then obviously good, but um, I think we all have to respect his decision. He's been around the game a long time. He knows his, be his body more than anyone else. Uh, I'm sure a Alex is disappointed and his teammates because he's a, he's a top goalie. Um, you know, I was only aware of it in, in the last coming days. I was a bit surprised, but 
obviously I haven't spoke to Alan now, I respect his decision and, and we move forward. Do you think he's got sort of years left him? I think there's quotes from Alex Quickly saying that he's hoping to sort of play on towards sort of 40. Do you think he's, he's still got that? Yeah, maybe that's him? been part of his decision. He wants to extend his, uh, his club career a bit, a bit longer. Um, only Alan knows his body, you know, what he feels after he comes off Astro Turf or Grass after he's played three games in a week. Only he knows how his body's feeling. Um, but, you know, he's got the right to make big decisions for his career um, and I'll support him and back them decisions um, and, and respect it. But um, it's definitely Scotland's loss because he's a top goalie. Andy, how does uh, Alan McGregor compare to the sort of keepers you've, you've played with over the years? Yeah, certainly one of the best. Um, I've actually I've, I've been really fortunate. I think since I started playing that the goalies has been sort of a strong area with, with goalies I've played with. But I think uh, Giggs is definitely right up there. So it's obviously it's, it'll be a big miss for Scotland. But I think Giggs has just felt that you know it's, it's that point in his career where he needs that, that extra recovery. He still doesn't look like in terms of his performances that he's anywhere near sort of you know coming to the end. He's, he's playing career does he? No, and that's the thing. Obviously, this is the first year I've played with him, but I've watched him over the years and. And you see what a top goalie he's been, and, and when he signs in the summer at the, you know, the ripe old age of 36, you, you don't know what Alan McGregor you're going to get if you're going to get a top one, but he seems to get better with age. So, uh, yeah, like you said, his, his performances this year are magnificent, especially in Europe. So, uh, you know, we're delighted to have a, such a top goalkeeper. How important has he been to the dressing room this year? We see him in the pitch, and he seems to be so vocal, and he's, you know, he's just always sort of, what do you say, gesticulating and, you know, in people's faces and all that. How, how does he sort of. Lead the dressing room in that sense. Ah, he's, he's vocal, all right, but um, <laughs> he's uh, you can never underestimate, you know, experience, and uh, he's someone that brings a lot of it. Not only for for game experience, but Rangers experience. He's been there and done it. He's uh, he's won the big trophies here, and he's someone that cares a lot about this football club. So we're, we're very happy to have him, and um, you know, any help we can get elsewhere, it's it's uh, it's valuable because the experience counts. It's also been a difficult week for the club in terms of. Coming out the cup, but is, is, is Alan somebody who is important set in terms of setting standards and making perhaps guys coming in, new into the club realise what's it required to, to sort of get back to the top levels? Yeah, definitely, but I don't think it should take new signings that long to, to realise the expectations of the club. Uh, I don't think, well, I know me personally, and I know a, a lot of boys will be the same that probably not slept too well since Tuesday because you just want that Saturday to come to, to try and put things right, but. Listen, the reality is we've we've let the club down uh, on Tuesday. But looking forward, we can't control what happens over the road. We just need to control the, the three points we need to get on Saturday afternoons and, and try and make a title race of what we've got. We're never going to give up uh, the situation we're in. It's not perfect. Celtic are obviously heavy favourites, but it's up to us to control what we do. And uh, that's all I can pretty much say about that. And then in terms of you know personal pride, when you're at big clubs and you've 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 turned to fail in the big games, then you're playing for your future. So we've got we've got nine finals to to try and try and prove that we deserve to beat this football. Club. Is, is that the way you feel that you know obviously the manager's talking about making changes in the summer that if, if guys aren't performing to a level, then that, that that's the danger. Then that's the way you should feel anyway. Um, like you said, if if you're uh, if you're not bringing trophies at a club that expects trophies, then then you've failed. So. Ultimately, that's going to fall down to that you've not you've not lived up to expectations in the big games. So you need to try and prove. And the because listen, the, the next nine games are still big games for us. You know we need to realise that, and uh, it's up to us to try and turn our fortunes around it and try and try and close the gap as much as we can. As much as you're out the cup, you can't feel, I suppose, that the season's over. You've, you've, you there must be still plenty of things to play for. Yeah, hundred percent. We um, listen. We don't want to walk our way. We don't want to. We don't want to fall on now. We've still got nine games to go and. And like I said, we're certainly not going to give up. As hard as it, as hard as the reality is that we are that eight points behind just now, it's, it's up to us to try and claw it back and, and make it as tight as possible. Stephen, team news is there any injury updates? Yep, we've got two major doubts in Ryan Jack and Scott Arfield. Um, a few other guys are carrying some niggles, but I'm sure they'll pull through and be fine. Uh, so they're the big worries at the moment, Arfield and Jack. What's the issues? Um, Jack owes his foot stroke calf. And Scotty Arfield's his calf as well. Is Eros Gresda, is he any closer to, to Yes, this he's close. Uh, he's trained now for probably 10 days, a couple of weeks. So he's, he's pushing to, to to come back into, into the squad. Um, Nikola Katic has been ill for a couple of days, but has tried to grind through it. Um, so I'll speak to him this morning, see how he feels. Uh, I think besides that, I think we're all right. With the two longer-term boys, is there any update in, in their conditions? 
No, Jamie's been to see the, the specialist um, who's had a look at his knee and, and tidied it up a little bit and he's he's on course for what it is, maybe the back end of the season, the very back end. Uh, if not, it'll be a pre-season situation for Jamie. In terms of Graham Dorans, um, I don't know. I don't know because um, he's had a couple of setbacks uh, since he's come back and um, I'm not sure. I, I was hopeful uh, a couple of weeks ago, but I'm not, I'm not sure what's, wh where he's at just yet. Is that a concern, McGraham? I mean, he just seems to keep getting these sort of setbacks at his stage in his career. I mean, is it, is it a worry for him in that sense? Um, hopefully not. Hopefully, um, you know, he's outside with a physio now, pushing to, to, to come back in to the squad. Um, but he's been in this situation two, three times before this season and he's had a setback. So um, I can't say I'm confident right now, but I'm hopeful that he can he can get through and, uh, and be available as soon as possible. Stephen, can I just ask you one more thing? The Kilmarnock player, uh, Chris Boyd, in a, a newspaper column this morning, has said that Bono Barisic looks like a player who doesn't want to be at Rangers mm. and has also questioned Mark Allen's role. Are you the kind of manager who will you know, cut that out, pin it on the wall in the changing room and say to the boys, there's your team talk almost? No. No. Um, players... I've got mobile phones, the media's on in the hand. They'll know what pundits and ex-players have said towards them personally. Uh, I'm sure Bonner will be aware of what Chris has said. Um, I don't think Mark Allen will care too much what Chris has said because first and foremost he's identified them as the head of recruitment and that's not his role. Um, Mark Allen's the technical director of the football club and has done an incredible job since he's walked through the door. You know, when he's come in, um, there needed to be a lot of changes in the team, in the squad, in the staff, at Ibrox, at the training ground, and he's doing everything he can to improve things. And if you look at where the club is now compared to what he walked into, um, he should be applauded for the job he's done. But I don't think Mark will be too worried about what other people think about him. Um, but if I was Borna, um, I'm sure he can find the peace. And, um, it's up to Bona if he wants to comment on what Chris has said or if he wants to show in his performances that Chris is wrong in what he said. That's up to Bona. It's not up to me.